Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is an E46 BMW. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to perform a cylinder leak down test. Now, a compression test is where you hook up a gauge to a cylinder, you use the engine starter to crank the engine over and you see how much compression the engine can make on its own. Unlike that test, a cylinder leak down test uses external air to pressurize the cylinder and then measure how much the difference between the air that's going into the, the tester and the air that's being lost going out of the tester. So the difference in the two pressures is the percentage of air that is being leaked out of the cylinder. And what's more, you can actually listen to where the air is leaking out of to help you determine what, you know, where the air is actually leaking out of. Is it leading, leaking out of the exhaust valves, the intake valves, the piston rings, or is it actually leaking through the head gasket in some way? Is it leaking into one of the cooling jackets and getting into the radiator? A couple of different ways air can be leaking out. So anyway, it's gonna be an interesting test. Let's get started. So I've already performed a compression test in a previous video, in case any of you didn't see it. Uh, the hot numbers are really what we're concerning ourselves with. Number one cylinder is showing okay compression, two through six are not so good. I believe the bottom service limit on this engine is about 146 PSI. So you can see we're a little lower than that in a couple of cylinders. I wanna find out what's leaking and what, what the problem is. So first things first, you need to warm the engine up before you begin this test. Then we need to remove several things. We need to remove the microfilter housing and the microfilter, the, uh, the two engine covers. You need to remove obviously all the coils and the spark plugs. You also need to remove the air scoop, the fan and the fan shroud because you need to be able to get to the front of the, uh, of the engine. You need to be able to turn the crank pulley. So that's what you need to do to prepare. I've obviously already taken care of that stuff. If you don't know how to do any of this, please take a look at my common repair steps video and then also Go ahead and check out my compression test video if you haven't already because um, in that video I removed all of the, the coils and the spark plugs. That's pretty easy. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts for each coil and then it's a 16 millimeter socket for the spark plugs. You need a 22 millimeter socket on uh, something like a breaker bar. I happen to have this long ratchet which kind of makes things a little easier because I can keep readjusting it. So you want to hook it on to the crank pulley bolt just like that so that you can turn the crank over. What we want to do is we want to reach top dead center in each cylinder before we go ahead and test it. So to find top dead center you want to get yourself a long screwdriver, longest you got. Just stick it down into the spark plug hole and we're going to turn the engine over until we see the screwdriver pop up. There, it's starting to pop up and now it's going back down again. So we went a little too far. About there seems good. So that's top dead center. We don't know if it's on the compression stroke or the exhaust stroke yet. Uh, we'll find out in a minute. So we're just gonna screw in the hose. This hose has got an o-ring on the bottom of it so that's what does the sealing you don't need to over tighten it you need to be able to get it back off again so just hand tight so now we need our compressed air so ideally you want to use an air source that has at least 100 psi um, because you want to put you know 100 psi into the cylinder it's just a little easier to do the math that way you know if you put 100 psi into the cylinder and you're your, uh, your output um, gauge is reading 90, you, 90 PSI, you know you're losing 10 PSI, easy, that's 10% loss right there. This particular compression gauge, which is an OTC one, it actually has a little chart on it that would help me figure out what the percentage losses are if I put in 90 PSI or 75 PSI. You just do the math, you divide the output by the input and that tells you the percentage. But we're gonna use uh, 100 PSI for this particular test. So I'm going to open this up and that's going to put air in there. And if this didn't go up, that would mean all the air would be escaping from the cylinder. If that was happening, then that air would, prob would be escaping through the exhaust valves because we would be on the exhaust stroke and not the compression stroke. But since you can't see any losses right now, we know we're on the, in the uh, intake stroke, the compression stroke. And something's wrong with my air. 
So I just uh, bumped my air pressure up to over 100 PSI so that we can at least get 100 PSI here. Uh, one thing I also did was I removed the air intake box. I forgot to mention that before. You want to remove that so you can hear if there's air escaping from the uh, intake manifold. And lastly, we're going to pull off the oil filler cap. That way we can tell if there's oil escaping past the piston rings or there's air escaping past the piston rings. Let's open up air. Oh yeah, no loss at all. So that one's really good. Okay, so we're just gonna move to the second cylinder. Okay, number two. Already I can hear air escaping. Eighty percent. Let me pull the mic over, see if I can hear this. There's a little bit coming out of here. But most of it's actually coming out of the spark plug hole for number three cylinder. Nothing's really coming out of the intake boot. And then if you want to see if there's air coming out of your exhaust valves, just go back to the tailpipe and listen. And there's, there's nothing here. Okay, so with a... Uh, with 80 on the output gauge, that's a 20% loss, and most of it was coming out of the number three spark plug hole. So that's pretty interesting. I'm writing that down on the whiteboard for now. We'll analyze our results later. Let's move on to cylinder number three. So number three. It's about 20, maybe 19% uh, loss. Some of it's coming out of cylinder number four. Most of it's coming out of cylinder number two. So some out of four, most out of two. Nothing coming out of the intake. Let's go check the exhaust. Yeah, nothing in the exhaust. There's a little bit coming out of the oil filler cap as well. Okay, move on to number four. Cylinder number four. That is also about 19%. Most out of three. A little bit out of five, but mostly out of three. This is basically looking like a head gasket failure. Failure of the head gasket between the cylinders. Okay, here's five. That's about 8% leakage. Mostly out of six. Six, there's uh, four. Not really very much. So here's number six. Oops, looks, see the pressure's not going up. So it looks like we're on the exhaust stroke. Got to turn the crankshaft 180 degrees. There we go. Okay. Number six again. Now we're on the compression stroke. And it looks like we've got about 6% leakage. And that's mostly out of cylinder number five, spark plug wheel. About what we would have expected. So these are the, the official results. No leakage in cylinder number one, even though we do still have uh, not as good a compression as we, 
as we would like. Uh, the, the compression you're looking for is around 200 on this engine, I do believe. Uh, so 20% loss on number two, mostly uh, into number three cylinder. 18% loss on number three, mostly into number two cylinder. And uh, there was a little bit into number four cylinder as well. Uh, so number four is 20% out of number three. So that kind of makes sense. And then number five is 9% out of six. Six is 6% 6 out of five. What's basically happening is this area right here between cylinders is leaking, okay? And it's either the head gasket failing or more likely it's the head that's warped at this point. And so that head gasket can no longer do its job. Um, most people don't really know that they have a blown head gasket until this area starts leaking here and here and combustion gases get into the cooling channels. That's what these are. These are cooling channels where the coolant circulates in order to cool the engine down. So most people don't know they have a blown head gasket until that happens and they start getting an overheating situation because those um, exhaust gases are going into the, or the, uh, yeah, the exhaust gases are going into the cooling system and overpressurizing it and reducing its effectiveness um, and also causing coolant to probably leak out into the, the combustion chamber once the uh, engine cools down as well. My particular case that's not happening cooling is still fine it's just in between the cylinders that uh, the gasket is now leaking so those are some interesting results to say the least um, it's probably been leaking like this for a while and i just haven't noticed because there is no symptom like i said it drives really great um, there, there there's no you can't really notice that difference in compression between cylinders one and the rest of them it's not really doesn't really sound imbalanced it doesn't feel imbalanced at all um, it's still really fast so uh, it, it doesn't sound like the engine is unhealthy at all and in fact I could have gone on like this for who knows how long not even knowing that this problem existed until maybe eventually that head gasket leaked um, in the vicinity of a cooling jacket uh, so yeah I, I don't know. I, I'm obviously going to be dealing with this in the future. I don't know exactly when. Um, and I don't know how big that uh, I'm going to go with that. Because, you know, it, it could be as simple as take off the head and get it decked at the machine shop for 45 bucks, bring it back, put a new head gasket on, problem solved. That would solve that problem. Um, but there are other problems with this engine. The, you know, the engine also burns oil. I'd like to deal with that. I don't know how far I'm going to go with that, whether I'm going to remove the engine to do that or whether I'm going to try to do it with the engine still in the car. I'll probably make another video talking all about that particular issue. Uh, the M54s have a, a problem with their piston ring, with their oil control rings and, and causing uh, the engine to burn a lot of oil. At this point, I think I'm going through um, an extra four quarts for every 75,000 miles or 7,500 miles. So every oil change I'm putting at least four, four more quarts in there during the life of that oil change. So um, yeah, that's, that's a pretty high consumption at this point. I know that a lot of other people are having that same exact problem. Anyway, like I said, I'll, I'll go into that in a separate video. I think that ends this video for now. Leak down test, this, is, this applies to any car out there. Really good test to do to determine the overall health of your engine. I hope you found the video useful. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.